Okay, I can jump on to a little higher power. Okay, and these are typical myocardial cells, aren't they? Okay, and if I go off looking, I find that as I get over here, see, this layer again is what? Endocardium, isn't it? So I come in and I look, and look at how big these cells here are. These are huge cells compared to the more typical myocardial cells. Okay. So these are nice large cells, got some fairly large ones along here, and they get off to the typical myocardial cells and dust, excuse me, uh, uh, in there. So, so these are myocardial cells. These enlarged ones, and their location you know, is easily said subendocardial. What are these large subendocardial cells? The Purkinje fibers. Their function, give the function of these cells. The function is to conduct the action potential, right? They're, they're larger and they conduct the action potential more rapidly and more efficiently than standard myocardial cells. So they're modified myocardial cells. They're, they're essentially the same cells as the muscle, except they're a little larger, and they conduct better. So they ensure that the impulse gets uh, through the uh, heart structure itself with appropriate timing. Okay, with appropriate timing. Okay, does that all make sense? Okay. Um, so, is that the same thing with the QRS? Right. The 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 QR segment is going down the bundle of his, and it's really like the um, RS that's coming up the Purkinje fibers on the on the lateral walls, isn't it? That's the RS of that um, electrocardiogram. Okay. We go on and take a look at the next slide. Okay, we see quite a few structures in the field of view here. Uh, from this distance, can you recognize this tissue? We can see it better like o over here. I hear a couple people saying muscle. If we go in and look at it under higher power, we see that it is what kind of muscle? I see peripheral nuclei, good clue, right? So it's skeletal muscle. This is a cross section of skeletal muscle. Okay? And oh Glorioski, look at there. Look at there. Identify the tissue occupied by the arrow. Boy, you better not miss this one. The muscle is or the, the muscle is. The tissue is adipose. adipose. Where do we find adipose? Everywhere. Everywhere. Good, good. Okay. Well you leave this class, at least you're gonna know that. <laughs> At least you're going to know that. Okay, I look around and I find this very distinct structure. Very distinct structure. Okay? Uh, the pointer is in the lumen of an artery. Identify the tissue indicated by the pointer. Blood. Blood is a tissue, isn't it? Okay? And. If I get in and look close at that blood, by the way, uh, identify the dark objects at the tip of the pointer. The dark objects are what? White blood cells. Erythro uh, not erythrocytes. White blood cells. Leukocytes. Good. Excellent. Okay. Um, and, and then all of these other objects are red blood cells. And you notice they don't have nuclei, and so they show up paler than the white cells, 
and white cells because of the nucleus show up very distinct. Okay, I come over and I see a oh ooh, 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 look ah identify the tissue just exactly indicated by the pointer. You can see three nuclei there. It's great. Tissue. Simple squamous epithelium. Excellent. Excellent answer. Okay. But you notice I can um, see three nuclei of it right along. Right up. You see those? That's great. Okay. Little flat ones. Squamous. Flat. Okay. Uh, and what, uh, what layer is that? Endothelium. What tunic is that? It's the tunica intima, isn't it? And the tunica intima is just that layer of endothelium and, and a tiny bit maybe of, of uh, a basal lamina and I don't know, there may or may not be some, some connective tissue associated with it. But what is this very distinct layer, if I just move the pointer a tiny bit deeper, this very distinct darkly stained layer here. This layer is the internal elastic lamina. And this is a very characteristic appearing structure. This internal elastic lamina is, is you know, contorted like this because the vessel is basically constricted. When the vessel becomes dilated, this internal elastic lamina would be straightened out, wouldn't it? Okay? And it gives a lot of elastic support to that um, uh, vessel. Identify the tissue occupied by the pointer. The tissue is smooth muscle. Excellent smooth muscle. Look at those nice long cigar shaped nuclei. Okay, very characteristic smooth muscle. What tunic are we observing here? This tunic is the tunica media. Okay, we see occasionally scattered in here, scattered in here, there, a little squiggly line. What do you think that is? An elastic fiber, isn't it? Okay. And we get out here to a, a more, to, to a, the, the squiggly dark line on the perimeter of the smooth muscle. And this structure is the external elastic lamina. And, and it's showing us the outside limit of the tunica media. Therefore, this layer of connective tissue, oops, I, this layer of connective tissue is occup, occupied by the arrow is the what? It is the tunica externa, a.k.a. the tunica adventitia. What does adventitia mean? It's connected directly to the other tissues around. If I pop back to a lower power, we can see that the advent tissue goes directly to some, connect, uh, some adipose, directly to some other connective tissue, uh, directly out to a, a tunic around another blood vessel. It's always directly connected to some other tissue around the outside, isn't it? That's, that's an, an advent tissue. It has no free surface. Okay? It has no free surface. Okay? So again, the major structure in the field of view is an artery. Okay? And it's a little squished. Often arteries are very, very round. Often they show up as very, very round. Uh, we look around though and we see this structure. Look at this one. Okay? Coming all along here. All along here. Okay? This structure is a what? Vein. And veins have very loose walls, they collapse very easily, and you often see this kind of, of view of a vein. So again, the tissue indicated by the arrow is? Blood. Correct. Okay. 